Builders Industry Watch. My name is Bola Oba. We are starting a series, a series that focuses on engaging the average middle class potential home builder or house builder in understanding the rudiments of what it entails to put up a structure that he or she could call home. A series that identifies the common errors that artisans make in the course of their jobs. A series that prefers workable solutions, not only to members of the artisan class, but indeed to an average upper middle class potential builder of homes who may need not to be destructively engaging, but productively and suggestively engaging with an artisan or a group of professionals working to help him or her translate a vision of a home or a house to reality. I am engineer Babatunde Fale, and you are most welcome to Alda Industry Watch. Last episode, we dwelled on your financial expectations in constructing your dream home. Today, we will be breaking it down further into what the roles of a plumber is in the construction of that your dream home. We'll be looking at three aspects of the plumber as a professional. We'll look at the role of a plumber in the construction environment. We will then secondly look at plumbing mistakes that are common in domestic, residential, and commercial properties. And lastly today, we will be dwelling on how to identify a competent plumber that you would engage in helping out to construct that your dream home. Now on to the role of the plumber in the construction environment. The plumber is saddled with the responsibility of providing supply of water and the discharge of waste water from your building. He would connect that dream home of yours to the mains as provided by the government or to a source of water supply within your community, estate, or the compound itself. The plumber will ensure that the supply is of good pressure, good quality, and good standing as it relates to every aspect needing water in your home. He or she is also saddled with the responsibility of taking away the waste, be it liquid or solid, from your construction property. You can look at the plumber like the system of your body, liking him into someone that is saddled with flushing your system from your veins, ventricles that the heart will pump blood round to circulate within the body system and from the digestive end taking feeds of fluid and solid into the body and expunging same 
as waste matter out of the body. The plumber should ensure that the type of materials, as in the pipes, the fittings and the fixtures used in the plumbing system are correct and original. We have a lot of shoddy materials going around in the market today. But the plumber should be able to identify the good and original materials to use on your pro property. The role of the plumber is also to check that the system of the building is airtight, that there are no leakages within all the system of the building. It should run the pipes adequately well, should observe all te techniques and cautions as delivered in their re regulatory st standards. It should pressure test the system to be sure that everything is tight without leakage. The plumber should also ensure that the flushing system of the entire building as to the waste is seamless and can be done naturally without help. But the plumber should be sure that the water source into the building or the structure is safe for use. That is the role of your plumber. Now we go on to the common mistakes that you will see in the plumbing systems of most domestic residential accommodations that you find. But the first one that I would like to dwell on is the issue of vents and traps. This is a sensible and very sensitive issue. You will find that you would enter some bathrooms and you will perceive foul odors in the bathrooms. No, it is not that those bathrooms are not clean, but this foul smell comes from the waste traps that are in such bath bathrooms. Every floor drain or basin drain or bath drain that you find in any bathroom system has got something that is called a trap system within it. This trap system ensures that there is water always in the line of those traps such that foul air from the waste pipes wouldn't backflow into the building. These traps could give way their water bottled traps if there is no enough ventilation. I would explain. Now, the atmospheric pressure from the top of your fixture, be it a bath or a basin, when water is bottled in, in heat, should equal that at the end of the water trap. But what you find is that because there is not enough ventilation, in the sea system, the atmospheric pressure on the basin or the bath of your feet fixture would be higher and will now flush down that drain, remove the water that is meant to trap foul hair, and as a result, leave a loop that will be free for foul smell 
to back from the waste pipe onto outside your floor drain or the drain of your fixture. Such bathrooms will now have so much odor that at times will be very unbearable. What should be done is to create more vents in that system. As a matter of fact, every trap should be linked to a vent. And your vent should be designed that they should use slow vents to make them go back up such that they won't be flooded at any time. You should be careful that the end of your vents should be higher than the rim, the floor plane rim of any fixture that you are using, be it the basin or the bath. Secondly, it is the plumber's responsibility to ensure that slopes of draining edges are such that they are not too sharp or not too slow. Drainages are meant to flow naturally without help. But you will find out that when the waste drainage system has a slope that is too sharp, the water will speed on, go off faster, leaving solid waste behind. This will cause further biological degradation and could result in lots of health hazards later on. Now, your drainage system could be for wastewater or for solid waste. The slope of your drainage system is the gradient at which the pipes for waste are laid such that a natural flow of wastewater or solid water out of the building system is ensured. These slopes, if placed too sharply, would mean that water would flow through the system much quickly without taking along the solid waste in that drainage system. This will mean having solid waste inside of the pipes of such a system, which could lead to health hazards in the future. If these slopes on the other hand are not as sharp and are like horizontal, you find out that there is water retained in the system which will have similar effects. If on the other hand, the slope is slow such that it looks horizontal, you will find out that water wouldn't flow naturally in that piping system. As such, you will have water and solid waste being retained in the piping system and you would have the same effects and health hazards as the first. It is paramount that the plumber ensures that he or she has a slope of a quarter of an inch height to every one foot in the pipe system, which means that the plumber should have one inch elevated height of the pipe to every four feet of every pipe. This will ensure a natural slope and drainages will be cleared out quicker and naturally without any help. The third common mistake that I've noticed over the years is that of 
the clearing out system. I have noticed that a lot of our plumbers don't create clear out systems at corners or joints of their drain wastes. These systems are meant to be positioned such that if there are any clogs in that system or in any corner, they could be opened and augers inputted into the system to clear out any impediment blocking or clogging that line. Some clear out points are also located at very hidden and not so easily accessible parts of the plumbing system such that the plumber that is coming around to maintain the system would have to break other surfaces or find it tough to reach those clear out system to dislodge any impediment therein. The fourth mistake that I noticed from plumbing systems in the years are supply system. You will find out that in some ba bathrooms, while using the water, like in the shower, for instance, while using the shower, and another bathroom turns up his own shower, there is loss of pressure. In the bathroom that was using water previously, this happens because most plumbers don't know which angle to tap their supply from, from the mains that is entering into such sections. The plumbing system in homes are designed such that you have a main line supplying water into a particular section of a floor or the entire floor. And from that main line, branches are connected to feed other bathrooms, laundry, or the kitchen areas. You find out that some plumbers tap from the mains, from the underparts of the main line. If you tap from the underpart of the main line, you would find that the water running freely through that main line would lose pressure at the point that is tapped if any appliance is opened at that point. The right thing is to tap at a right angle from any mains, then send it back down to where you want it to supply. The fifth common mistake that I've noticed from plumbers over the years is the use of fittings. Most times, the Y, the W, and the T fittings are misused. There is the WY fitting that is slower in use. But once they use the, the T, you find out that as the waste comes rushing down the pipeline, it splashes on the baseline of the connecting pipe, but flows to the other side before now coming back. That backlash of the flow causes some of the solid waste materials to go behind the lines of the pipe and get stuck at those points. What should have been used was a gentle Y fitting, which would have controlled the waste of water coming from the main vertical line and controlling it to flow directly into the horizontal main line below to collect. But you find a lot of plumbers using the T because it is readily available instead of the Y 
to connect and direct the flow of water easily through the sea system, which would aid flushing the solids out better of those sea systems. With these five mistakes that our plumbers make on site, I hope I have helped broaden your scope as to what to look out for when constructing that your dream home. Now, I will take you onto what to notice in selecting a competent plumber to use on your proposed dream project. The first thing is certification. Is that plumber that has been introduced to you, is he or she certified? Do you look at what sort of certificate he or she carries? Certification means that that plumber had attained formal training and competence in plumbing services. You need to be sure that that plumber was trained formally by a good institute other than those that have informal training on the streets. Secondly, you need to watch closely how safe that plumber operates. Is it clothed in the right apparel? Does he have the right tools to use? When speaking to you, does he or she inquire of you what difficulties you have before jumping on to render a maintenance service to you? How does he or she present him or herself? You need to be sure of the tools that that plumber uses. Is it a plumber that wouldn't know how to diagnose the maintenance problem that you have in your plumbing system? Or one that will just come with his chisel and hammer and break all the tiles of your bathroom because he, is, he or she is searching for a defect in the system. You need to be sure that you are engaging a plumber that knows his onions and can deliver. Is the plumber good in estimation? Can that plumber tell you that this picture is original and that is shoddy? What information and advice can you get from such a plumber? Before giving that plumber that contract, why not give he or she the drawing? Let that plumber interpret that drawing in relation to ease or a service to be rendered to you. And you will be sure that that plumber understands what the system of plumbing for you takes. Remember, employ only a proficient plumber that one, is certified. Two, can diagnose. Three, can interpret drawings. And four, will be sure to use the right tools. I hope this episode has been educative in you knowing what the plumbing system of your home is all about the role of your plumber and what to look out for in employing a plumber for that project you are about to commence. Thank you for having us here today and we hope that you join us for subsequent episodes of the ULDA Order 
industry watch. Goodbye for now. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the series. Look forward to another episode next week. Thank you.